video 2384 we made a tourbillon. The tourbillon's a beautiful mechanism and there's a whole host of people who'll tell you what a difference it makes and how awesome it is. Unfortunately, on the other side, there's an exact opposite number of people telling you actually it's over complicated and it doesn't do much at all. Whatever you believe. A tourbillon is certainly beautiful and it contains this, an escapement mechanism. This is actually the heart of the clock and it consists really of two things. It consists of a method of storing and releasing energy and a method of inputting a tiny bit of energy. Because if you think about a swing, in order to get your kitty going on a swing, you have to start off with a lot of energy because you're moving the child. Once you've got them moving, to keep them moving just takes a little bit of a tap. And of course, a swing is really a pendulum. Another way of looking at this is a harmonic oscillator. It will maintain that mechanical movement as long as you replace the lost energy. It takes no more energy once it's moving. You're replacing lost energy through friction and the like. This is exactly the same with the balance wheel and the spring. The balance wheel is a flywheel. That would continue forever if it weren't for friction. You have to put in the extra bit of energy to overcome the friction and the flywheel will spin at a fixed rate depending on its mass. The spring is also an energy store. It stores the energy in its material. The flywheel winds up the spring. Then when the spring is wound, the flywheel stops. It releases its energy, spinning the flywheel. That is transferring the energy between the flywheel and the spring. And it would do that forever if it weren't for friction. What the escapement mechanism does is the same as a child in a swing. It gives it a little push and it does that through the energy input. Mostly on clocks, it's things like motors, weights and springs. So you have a weight on here, that unwinding of the weight, part of the energy pushes against the escapement mechanism to put back in that energy. Because this balance wheel and spring is an oscillator. It will wind and unwind, spin and unspin at a fixed rate. If you push your child in the swing harder, they don't move faster. The movement as a pendulum is dependent on the length. What happens is they move further, so the amplitude increases, but the rate stays exactly the same. It's a curious property of these things, and it's the same with the flywheel. Depending on the strength of the spring, the mass of the, of the balance wheel, that will tick backwards and forwards, wind and unwind, spin one way and the other, at a fixed rate. That's why it's a, an oscillator and why we can use it, because we can count that rate. And of course, this is what this does. That's what the tick is. The tick is the counting of it winding and unwinding. The winding and unwinding is a property of its mass and its springiness. This weight that we have here gives it the extra little push, just like a child in a swing. Because it does something else. When we have a fork in there, it catches it and holds it in a second or so, a brief period of time, while it does that job, it lets it go, holds it again. So an escapement actually is quite a complicated thing and it's a trying to achieve actually a complicated job. It's trying to achieve all of those things in one go. It's one of the reasons that if you do 3D printing and you try to make escapements, you're going to be a bit disappointed with them because they take endless settling about with to actually get them to work. So I thought I would give it a go to try and make an escape mechanism that would actually just work straight off the printer. And this is what I drew up. Right, to put this together, first things first, we take these frames and you'll notice there's four of these holes in it. And each one of those takes a skate bearing that you just press into place. And the same with this frame, only there are three of them. So we press those into place. Then when we've done that, there are four of these pillars and they go in there and again, they just press into place and they should be a tight fit. Next, we have the balance wheel and spring and the spring's got a key in it and it glues onto there with a spot of glue holding it against the balance wheel and there's a tiny projection that should be facing in that direction. When it's glued in place, you turn it round and the spring slots in there and the balance wheel slots in there like that. The main drive wheel has a separate axle, so does the pallet wheel. It's got a lip on it, and the lip pushes in so that it's on the flat face of that main drive gear. Same with this. Then we pop that one in there. We take the selector fork and pop that selector fork in there, making sure that this little hook 
faces towards the actual balance wheel. The balance wheel has a pallet on it that will push that hook backwards and forwards. Then we drop the balance wheel in place, making sure that pallet engages with that fork, and the spring here pushes into that post. Then we can put the main drive gear in that way up so that it engages with that gear there. There we go, like that. And then we can put the top on. And the top just slots on there and presses on these uprights. Okay, that's it put together. And I've wrapped a bit of string around it with a weight on it. Now, I don't really want to run this from weight. What I'm going to do is put the spring motor here. But I've done this so we can see it works. If I hold the balance wheel and just drop the string of the edge of the table, then we've got a bit of weight on there. Let go of that balance wheel. <laughs> that's brilliant. Now, these things are temperamental. Uh, and this is working straight from the printer. I didn't have to file it or fettle it or muck around with it. I did a couple of things that were suggested to me by people and I think that's helped get it just going. The first thing is a friend of mine called Bord Lund Johansson, who runs BLG Engineering, told me to use this. He said, Rob, put a bit of Vaseline on it. That'll help get things going. And sure enough, there's Vaseline on the end of this wheel and that could well have contributed to working out of the box, which for escapements is pretty unusual. The second thing I was recommended was these things. Now I have a habit of just using whatever bearings I happen to have lying around and I reuse them all the time. But it was suggested to me to use ones not with rubber seals but the ones with the metal seals on them and preferably a ceramic bearing to cut down on the amount of friction and then within reason you can be guaranteed to get an escapement to work straight from the print and that, that doesn't really happen that often. This was printed on the Elegoo um, Centauri Carbon. That's a good machine, so it's fairly accurate as well. But I'm pretty pleased that it worked just straight away. And that is going to be the heart of a spring motor mechanism. I like the tourbillon, but it suspect it's a little unnecessarily complex for what I want it to do. And there is an argument, remember, about whether it does any good or not. It's certainly popular, people certainly love it, but the jury's still out on whether it actually does something. So I decided on a much simpler version, and there it is. Of course, it would go on the universe, should anybody want it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.